Hi, my name is Trevor Bagnall and welcome to my humble little workshop. Today we're going to be taking a mag light that doesn't work anymore and we're going to be converting it into a lightsaber. Let's get into it. Welcome back. So the tools that you need for this job are pretty straightforward. Any average workshop is going to have, you know, the tools that you need to do this. However, some of the parts are a little less than common if you get my drift. So we'll start with some of the more common parts though. Okay, so LED strip lights. You can buy these at any hardware store, uh, varying quality. You want to get the best quality uh, LED strips you can because they're going to have to stand up to a lot of voltage. Now, three batteries in a mag light. Let's uh, see, it's got three D-sized batteries. Those are one and a half volt batteries each. So when we put them all in series, like they would be in the flashlight, uh, we're only going to get a four and a half volts. Now four and a half volts isn't going to be enough to light these up. So if I show you, if I just get the polarity straightened away there and I hold those to the poles, I'm not getting the LEDs firing up. But if I put 12 volts, and again, making sure I got the polarity correct. If I put 12 volts on those LED lights, you're going to see those fire up just fine. Okay. So let's set that aside for now. We're going to leave these batteries aside. We're still going to need a couple of these batteries at the end of the job. Get this 12 volt battery out of the way. And the first thing you want to do, of course, is disassemble the mag light. So I've already got the end off of that. Uh, I thought it might have been the dead battery or, a, sorry, a bad bulb, but I used the spare bulb in that mag light and still didn't work. So something else is wrong with it. So we're going to take the top off the mag light. And then set that aside. We don't want to throw anything away. We're going to reuse bits and pieces of this, of course. And then we take the, uh, the light bulb out. And uh, as I said, that was a fresh bulb, but it doesn't seem to be working. And then you've got to take out the innards. So you're going to take off the, uh, the plastic dot off the end of that. And then there's a little hex key in there that you would, un, uh, you would uh, unscrew that. And then that allows that piece to pop out. Now, I've already gone ahead and done that. And then the rest of the mag light assembly. Uh, we're not going to need this piece, so we can just toss that aside. And then we're left with a wide open shaft and the rest of our frame of the mag light. First things first, uh, I'm going to take and I'm going to cut my LED strip down to size. Just need that piece there. The rest we can set aside. Okay. Also, we should finish disassembling our mag light. So we'll take the bezel off the end there. The old reflector, we're not going to need that anymore. Of course, it would just melt anyhow. Um, now, the old uh, piece of uh, lens that uh, fit in there, we're going to want to reuse that because that is actually going to fit down inside um, this unit here. But of course, it's too big. It actually sits there at the end uh, as it uh, currently is made. It just sits on the end, but we're going to actually have to resize it down so that it sits Right on the inside of that, if I get this angle just right here, you can see that groove just on the inside um, right there. Okay, so, so we're going to set that aside for the time being. And this, of course, we're going to need to keep. Don't lose the O-ring, of course. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a water-sealed unit when you're done, so don't lose any of the O-rings. Okay, and the body itself, uh, we're going to drill a couple of holes in the side here for the uh, intensity controls. Um, you don't really need uh, anything special there for that. Where did I put them there? So I just have a couple of metal knurled knobs there, and uh, I'm going to modify them such that I can drill through. Um, the knob basically works on, an, uh, it's a, like a touch capacitance uh, uh, property so it doesn't matter really what it is you can make them just about out of anything but the fact is that you touch it and you ground it it's like those touch lamps or the touch capacitance screen on your iPad it's all the same principle okay so we'll set that aside for the moment as well uh, the first thing we're going to work on is uh, the emitter and sizing the 
lens down to size. So get out some of my measuring tools here. Is I need to, uh, sorry, wrong piece. I need to measure what the inside of that piece is there. So with a set of inside calipers here. That's uh, about right, right there. And the diameter of that is, if I can get a measurement there, and I'll do this in millimeters, it's uh, just a little over 40, 45 and a half millimeters. And right now the diameter of that is closer to 50. So we just got to shave off a little bit off each side, a couple of millimeters. I want to mark this so it don't have to be exactly centered, just so long as it all fits on the disc. Drive a little bit of a circle there. It's gonna it's not very easy to see with that, but that'll do the trick. Don't forget safety glasses. Safety first. So now that I'm done grinding that down to size, I'm just gonna take a sanding sponge and kind of try not to scratch up the surface, of course, but uh, just clean up that little rough bit of plastic from the grinding. Just give that a nice smooth edge. Okay. And then that's going to fit in there just snug. You just want that to be just snug so it's not going to slide around in there. That's perfect. And next we'll need to fit our three LEDs on there and then I'll just take that end and kind of bend it around the edge a little bit and then I got to cut a little notch because you don't want to put too much bend in that and I can't because that's so tight uh, these wires basically got to get around the back side so I'm going to carve a little notch in that just to make sure that everything can fit through. You want to make sure your LEDs are uh, somewhat centered across the disc and once that's centered there I'm going to make a little mark where this has to be cut out and I just need about that much and now I'm going to take a little Dazuki saw and just very carefully kind of hard to get that started but Two cuts and then the last cut crossways I'll make with a sharp utility knife. Kind of cut that in from both sides. Clean that up. And we'll just give that a little bit of a clean cut. that through. Now these come with a, like a 3M adhesive backing on there that you can apply that. Uh, I would recommend that you uh, double that up and maybe use a little bit of an epoxy glue on the back side of that as well just for a little added strength. Uh, of course you don't want that coming undone in the middle of a fight right? So we'll just bend that around and then that's ready to go back inside of the housing. Okay. So there we have the completed emitter array. Okay. Next, we're going to have to take some measurements on the body, but here comes the secret part. Okay. You're going to need to get yourself one of these. Okay, these are not easy to come by. This is the Sabre induction coil. Okay, so this is the heart of the lightsaber right here. 
Now, this is an old one. It's been knocked around a few times, uh, but it's still good. You can see that the uh, induction coil on the end there still has a little bit of spring left to it. Of course, you want that to be uh, nice and springy because every time you, you hit somebody else's saber with your saber, that shock wave that travels down the lightsaber, it, uh, if that's like jammed up, that's just going to blow the whole induction coil. So anyhow, now, of course, these aren't standardized. Uh, manufacturers make them in all kinds of different uh, dimensions. That's if you can find them. Um, and you can see I got quite a bit of slop between the, you know, the mag light uh, body and uh, the rest of the assembly. So uh, we're going to pull out the secret weapon, and that is electrical tape. Okay. All we need to do is wrap a few wraps of electrical tape around that until it's just snug in the body. I'm not going to do that just yet though. I want to take some measurements first. Okay. So I've already drilled and tapped one hole here. If I can get that in focus. I've already drilled and tapped one hole. And that's where one of the, you know, the intensity buttons is going to be uh, bolted in place. Again, remember that's just a touch capacitance. Um, and that's going to end up touching on this part of the ring up near the emitter diode. And then the other one for just deadening it or uh, taking the intensity off the saber, anywhere just below that ring is fine. So I'm going to stick that in. I'm going to line that up so that I get the diode ring in line with that. And then so anywhere from there down. So probably go right there in the middle. I don't want those two buttons too close together so that I accidentally hit them by mistake. Uh, hit the wrong one that is. So we're going to set the set that aside and I want that in line with it but right down around there as I think I said. And we'll just give that a light tap. Don't hit too hard because you don't want to take and make your uh, mag light body out around. Uh, just a couple of little dings there and then I have a 764 drill bit here and I'm just going to drill through the side of the casing here. Okay, now that I got that hole drilled through the side of the casing what I want to do next is I want to tap a thread into that. So with a little tap and die kit that going in there carefully make sure it's nice and perpendicular so this is a number six fine thread and the reason for using a number six fine thread of course is that uh, that's a very common size of straight thread form that's used in household electrical components so any of the bolts that are holding the light switches up to your wall that's that kind of thread, so they're very common. And I'm guessing that everybody has a few kicking around their house. Okay, back that out a bit, keep the... And there we go, we got a nice thread on there now. Okay, now we're going to modify our second button there so that I can be used bolt down. So I'm just going to stick that in the vise. Again, I'll use my center punch, punch a little hole, center the drill bit with. And I'll first drill the 7 16th drill. These are just soft aluminum, so they drill out pretty easy. Okay, that's the first one. And then I'm going to step that drill bit size up a bit. And use, let's see, uh, it's a 964 bit, I believe.
And now I've got a nice clean hole. Got a little bit of a rough edge there that I need to clean up a little bit. And the, oh, there's the deburring tool right there. And we'll just give that a little bit of a scrape around. Take that edge off. So that is not, not sharp, not going to cut into anything. Yeah, number six, fine thread. And those are just going to go straight through the center of those now. Okay, and I should be able to thread those straight in to those holes that I just tapped. Now these bolts are a little long, I'm going to end up having to cut them off. But I'll get these started in. And those are just a nice distance because you got the neural part of the handle that you're going to hold on to. And with your thumb, you can basically adjust the intensity of the saber. Okay, so, and those are sticking out inside of the, uh, the hole there, you can see just a bit. Uh, I'm going to end up cutting those off so that they don't interfere with the saber emitter. So. Okay, we're going to have to do a little plan B here because it's uh, too hard to grind those off from down inside. But uh, before I start, this workbench is a mess. i got to clean it up. A dirty workbench is a dangerous workbench and a clean workbench is a safe workbench. So let's uh, put away some of the stuff we don't need anymore. Okay. It's a lot better. Now, instead of trying to cut these off from while they're inside, I'm going to cut them using a little Dremel cutting tool, cut-off wheel. I'm just going to need something to clamp these in while I do that so I can keep my fingers away from the business end of the Dremel tool. And then I'm going to have to clean it up with a little bit of a, a thread tap. Uh, that's the number eight and that's the number six. So I'll just set that aside. One. And two. Okay. We're done with that for now. Set that aside. And now what we need to do is take the rough end off of that and just slide it in the tap there just to give the... And this is where I need my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And there we go, that one's going to thread in nicely now as well. Okay, so let's back them back out. Okay. Okay, so the next thing, of course, is we got to wire the ends to the appropriate spots on the saber emitter. And then, of course, this is going to be in contact with our battery. So when you wrap that end in tape to make it uh, snug to the inside, you want to make sure that you got that well centered such that the little uh, power node there sits right on the middle of your batteries. Okay. And we're only going to be using two batteries when it's all back together. Okay. So that sits about there, those two batteries, and then there's just enough of them for the spring in the end. Okay, so first things first, let's wire that up. Now, 
plans for these leaked out on the internet uh, a while back and uh, that site got shut down just like everything else with the government uh, if it's you know worth having the government wants to control it right so um, anyhow uh, I can't actually show you which pins that I'm going to weld those two or the solder those two because that is of course proprietary and I almost forgot before I solder that up I got to fit this in of course so as I said These are never made to a standardized diameter. I think they could standardize on that. So we're going to wrap our ends with some electrical tape and then just every once in a while check and make sure we need to go yet that we get the right size and that fits in there just snug. So, that's it for that roll. And there's just a little bit of slop, so maybe a couple more wraps ought to do it. You want it snug, but you don't want it so tight that you can't get it up the length of the casing there. So maybe let's try that. And that was one wrap too many. So we'll just take a wrap off that. One and a bit. Okay. There, that's perfect. That's it's in there, but yet it's uh, you know it's snug enough that it doesn't fall out. And now we have to wrap the back end here as well. But remember to leave the ends of that exposed and the middle of that exposed. Those are our conduction points. And I'm all out of tape on that one. So, you should always have lots of electrical tape on hand. This stuff has so many uses. Okay. Now, the second benefit, I guess, of having to wrap this in the electrical tape is you won't have any risk of your pins shorting out uh, easily because the tape will be in between the two points. Well, it's a bit of an insulator. So let's wrap that up. Give that a few wraps. I think it's pretty close there. And just a little bit more. That back end is a little sloppy. teach you this in Jedi school by the way. And that's perfect. I like that. That seems to fit in there just the right way. So push that up to the end very carefully. See if I can get the focus pull on that. So inside we can see the end of the emitter, saber emitter, the recoil, and there's where one of those blocks of tape was. So we've got one button basically just above the tape, and this one down on the center part of the emitter. So just perfectly centered, so that when we turn it on and off and our intensity, we should get good reaction out of that. Okay, so now I need to solder those in place. So we'll get out our soldering gun and we'll be right back in a moment after I have the soldering gun heated up. Okay, welcome back. Uh, now that we've got our wires connected, I'm going to take that and thread our top back in place. You want to make sure you get enough length on those wires so that when you screw this in, they're going to coil up a little bit inside there. And if uh, the wires are too short, then they're going to break. So that's why I want to leave a little extra slack on those. There. Okay. We're 
almost ready to fire this thing up. So, two batteries. So basically it takes three volts to power this. Um, you want to reuse your spring in your end there. Otherwise keep that nice tight contact with the emitter. And there we have it. Completed lightsaber, ready to test. Okay, let me move the camera around so I got more room in the workshop here. And uh, we'll see if this works. Oh, I almost forgot to put the cover back on. There we go. Now that old button, uh, of course, it's uh, not using anything, but uh, if you want to just shove that back in there. Just for, if nothing else, it'll cover up the hole. It's a little tight to go in there though. I'm just going to get it just right. If nothing else, it'll keep any water from getting in there. Okay. I'm going to clean up the workshop. Okay, well, for, for all you doubting Thomases that uh, think that three volts isn't enough to power a lightsaber, well, you'd be right about that, of course. Um, the two batteries in there that's providing three volts power source is only providing the triggering power to the lightsaber. Now, the saber induction coil itself is self-contained in terms of its battery supply, but it still needs an external voltage trigger in order to turn it on and off and have some form of control to the outside of the saber, of course, right? So, um, now, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's go give this thing a whirl. Now, I'm just going to rearrange the camera so I've got a bit more space away from the workbench here. Now, before we start with this, safety first. Alright! homemade lightsaber. Thanks for watching.